am delighted to uh, welcome Reverend Gabrielle Kennedy, who is going to lead us in this conversation about how the organization Faith and for the Sake of All is collaborating with congregations to open up the resources of congregations and connect congregations to the communities around them around the subject of public health. Thank you so much, uh, President Cross. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be here with everyone uh, to talk about the congregation as a launching pad. And this is such important work uh, that it is the, uh, it really is the focus of what Faith and for the Sake of All uh, does uh, here in the St. Louis region, as we are committed to improving the health and well-being of African Americans by mobilizing the faithful. And uh, the boiled down version of the faithful is the fellowship of, of congregation, faith communities and moral communities who are concerned about their neighbors. And so uh, I invited with me today uh, a few friends to help us have this discussion. You know, one of the things that we certainly believe is we believe uh, in the importance, right, of the congregation as a place to enter into the community. Um, and one of the things that we're beginning to do is we're beginning to expand out of that just a little bit and redefine what it means to be in a community of faith. And so certainly it means all the traditional things that we know, right? Uh, it means pews and pulpits and it means uh, Sunday morning for, for, for most of us, although this is an ecumenical, uh, uh, an ecumenical uh, experience, uh, what it means to be church, amen. Yeah. Uh, it means that we do things in a non-traditional way. And sometimes it's not on Sunday morning. Sometimes it's on Monday morning. I'm a product of a church doing outreach. I was in a family that was not very churched, as you would say. I was not, you know, someone who was going to church every Sunday, that kind of, and the church that I became a part of outreach, they had a strong ministry for young people, a, a young person, a person that was brought up very low income, inner city, you know, single mother, the church saved my life, you know? So that's really what I, what I guide with, okay? So wherever I am, you know? And so I understand the importance of the church in education and connecting people and then relationships, right? Because it's those relationships that allow someone in the church to decide to outreach. And then when I got there, it was those relationships that allow people in the congregation to want to embrace me and want to embrace me without parents. Like I was a young person coming to church without family. And yet I was embraced. I was loved. I was loved as Jesus would love me. When I was a social worker and I would go out and meet with families who were in crises, you know, I would always want to know, like, are they connected to a church? What churches are close by? You know, um, if I had a wish list, it would be that back then when I was working, that I could pick up a phone and call up a minister or a church and say, okay, they just need food today. Okay. They don't necessarily need to be connected to, you know, no one needs to come and get their kids, but they need services today that I know the church can give because I have experienced the power of the church. So I'm always thinking about that. And even, um, and corporate America, you know, they understand. A lot of times the church doesn't always understand how powerful, you know, we are. They understand community and connecting. And they're like, what about faith communities? What about this? It was an experience with uh, that Tina and I went through together that it began to be highlighted for us that, uh, that the needs in Black communities that we saw, we saw it first in the church. Because the church as the anchor, right, for, uh, for many communities, um, uh, they, their folks, when they are at their lowest, they go to the church, right? And so we were trying to funnel uh, resources through churches, but the churches, they weren't ready. They did not have resources to be able to process, um, they didn't have the capacity rather to be able to process the resources that we were trying to bring to the church. And so that's what made it become uh, uh, a pretty, uh, uh, pretty important to us to say, how then do we increase that capacity so that when the resources show up, uh, Black churches specifically will be able to take advantage of those. There are some churches that were able to process those uh, resources. And when I think about that, I think of Pastor Renee Johnson. In the midst of watching people die 
and watching them die disproportionately because of the effects uh, of the morbidity rates, the hospitalization rates, contraction rates of coronavirus, we said there's got to be something more we can do. I called friends and I said, would you be willing to, 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 to host a testing site on your parking lot? And Reverend Renee was one of uh, those pastors who agreed to do it. And we are uh, forever grateful for that, not just because she said yes, but because she brought everything, she brought everybody, well, she brought the whole church with her. I had the honor of pastoring the church where I grew up. And one of the things I know about that congregation is that we did a very good job taking care of each other. How can we move from taking care of each other to taking care of our community? Mm -hmm. And faith and for the sake of all was the answer to my question. It was the, the resolve to my dilemma. And I, uh, when I received the call, certainly within the pandemic, trying to think of what is most important at this moment in the lives of my people? What do they need? And it, it let me know that as much as preaching Jesus is needed, necessary, and we, there's no way around it, we had to be Jesus. We had to demonstrate that uh, we would take care of the sick. You know, it, it looks different than the, the ancient text in this 21st century, but it was an opportunity for me to see the way to do it, the way to minister to this community so that uh, we would be uh, represented as known as a church that cares for the people of God. And uh, the question as to whether or not we would do it, I felt like, the Lord did not put us on that corner with that parking lot just to park a car. <laughs> that was Amen. A place, it was a place for ministry. Yes. And, and uh, so that really gave me the opportunity. It was a teaching moment for me as pastor to show the church how to be the church. We were no longer inside, but it was an opportunity for us to go out and make ourselves known and reach out to the community. And we had the expertise from Reverend Gabrielle and her staff to come in and care STL, come in and do it. And then we were able to launch off of that and, and partner with the St. Louis Diaper Bank and voter registration and other things that the people needed. Uh, so it was a great opportunity for us to even demonstrate Matthew 25, feeding the hungry, mm. you know, taking care of the, the sick, you know, making sure that the people had what they needed in that moment. We didn't even have to mention Jesus's name, okay? <laughs> Just the fact that we were being the people of God and it was it has been such a tremendous blessing. And it was clear that, that, yeah, that your church was a beacon. The church is not, uh, I believe, individual locations. The church is the church big C. And the more we can take advantage of that and leverage uh, the fact that we are more than we appear to be, I think yes. the more we'll be able to impact the world. But there is something when you, when you understand that the church is bigger than any one building, bigger than any one denomination, and it has inspired us to do uh, some things. One of our biggest projects coming up is called the Community Chaplaincy Project. Yeah, as we were doing this work of like literally bringing healthcare to the community um, on parking lots of churches, on street corners, we were finding that like, as so many people have seen, COVID-19 didn't just bring physical health issues and disparities to the surface. It brought all kinds of other disparities to the surface um, and mental health being a big one. We started having these conversations, you know, what, what role can we play as a faith-based organization in looking at health from a holistic standpoint. Like we were able to bring physical health care through the testing, um, but we were also doing pastoral care and chaplaincy as we were walking with people literally to sit down and have that test done. There's a lot of fear and anxiety, right? And we started to realize, you know, if you could access health care in a hospital system, you're automatically gonna have access to a chaplain, right? If you're going through healthcare institutions, but we are trying to bring healthcare to communities that have historic distrust of healthcare institutions. So maybe we need to bring the chaplains outside of healthcare institutions and into the community. And maybe there are communities that feel super marginalized and have been super alienated by institutional healthcare and institutional religion. 
um, such as queer communities that we may actually be able to care for more adequately by taking it out of the church. Um, and so we started looking at how could we create um, a chaplaincy project, uh, really recruiting people from the community. Some of them may be seminary trained and maybe ministry trained people. Some of them maybe not, but people who have a heart for the community. Um, so we're providing a path for vocational creativity and resilience outside of in traditional ministry settings for people to serve. Um, and we're providing this training for folks. So we've created through our networks of people, we've created um, 12 hours of training for these chaplains to, to provide uh, LGBTQIA competence and ability to engage scripture around LGBT issues, um, to provide trauma-informed spiritual care um, that takes into account, you know, all forms of trauma, including racialized um, oppression trauma and gender trauma and religious trauma, right? Um, we're looking at it from all these different angles and really equipping people to literally be chaplains for the community. As faith leaders, we have this beautiful gift, which is chaplaincy and, you know, pastoral care to offer to the community that can be then an access point for people to, to trust and to be able to access other services that they're in need of to take care of the whole person and take care of the whole community. And obviously spirituality is a piece of that too, right? Like prayer is a piece of that. Um, and we want to be, you know, of resource to people of many faith backgrounds and of no faith background, right? This is, we hope and envision for this to be a resource for unchurched folks. Um, and, and knowing that spirituality can be a resource if it's offered in tandem with all these other pieces of caring for our physical bodies, right? As Christ became incarnate, Christ invites us to care for the whole body of the person, um, including physical, emotional, psychological well-being. So I'm really excited about this project. Specific for us, what's important for faith and for the sake of all as we enter into this work is that we do that in a way that is as equitable as it can be. Uh, it, it's important to us not to just do something and say we can do it because it's easy, right? Sometimes we can do some things and they are pretty easy, but we can't stop there. We have to find the places and look to the edges, look to the margins and say, who's being left out in this process? And so this is not the easy work. This is the work that is difficult because it annoys people when you stop their momentum. When you say, oh, um, we gotta make sure that it's not just the people who can go online and sign up on the internet. What about those people who don't have internet? What about those people who don't speak English? What about those people who are deaf and need a translator? All of those items allow us not to keep people out on the edges and say, and, and, and be proud of ourselves because we got something done but we leave a whole up bunch of people behind us. So these are the kind of processes that we're undergoing now. Through the church, we are helping to make sure that uh, residents in black communities are getting signed up for these vaccines and we're in the process of doing it now. And so we are so grateful um, for this opportunity that we could share this information uh, with you all today. Uh, we ask you to support us. Go to our website, www.faithandforthesakeofall.org, just the way it sounds. Thanks so much.